All right, are, are we live? All right, we are live. Hey, welcome to the webinar. This is the fundamentals of gospel music for total, total, absolute beginners. I assure you, if you are here, you don't have to have any experience playing gospel music. Now, JP, Jonathan Powell, he's playing some really nice chords here, but don't be intimidated, be encouraged, be inspired that through this resource, the Gospel Music Training Center, you can get to uh, this level. We're going to take it all the way back to notes and scales and chords and progressions. So you are in the right place. Uh, Hear and Play was started uh, August 6th, the year 2000 long, long, long time ago. Gospel Music Training Center would come along uh, 2008 and ever since. We've been helping students all around the world. Uh, JP, Mr. Director of the Gospel Music Training Center. What's up, man? man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Glad to be here. What are we going to show the people today? Well, we're going to go through all the basics and fundamentals for those of you who are beginners, from the notes to the chords to the scales. All the tools that you need to play gospel music and do it fast. That's one thing that we've done. We've created a unique way and a unique approach because we've learned through the School of Hard Knocks how to play this piano. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you, how do you know you're in the right place? Well, you've been going to church, you've been sitting in the pews, but you got this yearning. You look to the band and you're like, I want to do that one day. Or maybe you even bought yourself a keyboard, but you just like really don't know where to start. There's so much information online. Uh I mean, there's a million YouTube videos, but you don't know the right order. Like, who do I start with? Who do I listen to? Mm -hmm. Well, there is a resource, the number one platform for gospel musicians, Mm -hmm. the longest standing platform. August 6th, the year 2000, this company got started. And so you're in the the right hands. Mm -hmm. And so what we fear we do in this webinar, uh, we're going to basically give you an opportunity at the end. To, we're going to talk about GMTC, but for now, we want to give you some knowledge, some nuggets. Right. This is the right way to get started. And it starts like this. Notes create scales. Scales create chords. Chords create patterns. Mm-hmm. And patterns create songs. Right. That's like how it works. So when it comes to notes, like the piano is this big thing, mm-hmm. but it's only two, two kind, black notes and white notes. Right. How, how, what's the most like, if, if, if I was a beginner and I needed to be able to identify notes easily, mm-hmm. what would you say like the most universal note is? Well, the, the most universal note is C. Mm-hmm. That's, it's easy to find because you have sets of black keys. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a set of two and then you have a set of three, right? And that's a pattern that you should recognize instantly when you look at the piano. You mean set. never four? Never four. Never right? one. Never one. Just mm-hmm. two and three. Just two and three. Uh, two. Michael Jordan. Just remember 23. That's a great Are you a Jordan fan? Um, I I like Jordan (laughs) shoes. I'm a Kobe fan, but I didn't get to see I thought you were a LeBron fan. Oh, no, man. (laughs) So so you're saying it it doesn't matter where you are on the piano. Except actually they trick you down here, but that's really the third note. Man, You just don't see it. You rarely play that. You rarely play that. So if you're just looking here, it's like two, three, Mm -hmm. two, three. Two, three. Michael Jordan. Two, three. So all they got to... Remember is Michael Jordan. Yep. Or I guess they can remember Magic Johnson. Or they can remember can be, LeBron James because LeBron James three, has 23. You said two. You, don't, you don't like LeBron. I, huh? I mean, I got to <laughs> respect him. He's great. So, so three, two. It's three, a long two. Time, though. We could start with three, two. That's, that's Magic Johnson. Yeah. Magic Johnson, three, two. That all works. So C is mm-hmm. always to the left of the of, two black keys. Right. And then how I remember the left of the three black keys is F. Right. So C, F, C, F. So if I was telling my kids, okay, if C is always to the left of the two black keys, don't disappoint me, beginners. (laughs) I know you beginners, but you're not that beginner. C is to the left. So where would it be over here? Just somebody guess for me. Where would it be? Bam, right there. Where would it be in this round? Let's take a wild guess. Like Vanna White. Boom. There it is. Boom. Very easy to find. Yep. I'm getting some static here. I am too. Yep. Where would it be right here? See, in this round, where would it be right here? And then it just follows the alphabet, really. So you got the first, what, seven notes of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. E, F, G. That's seven. It starts all over, right? There's no H. No H. So after you get to uh, G, oh, wait. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah a, B, C, it. It's G, tricky. It's F, tricky. G. Yeah. Now, if you get to G, then it starts at A all over again. All over again. Mm-hmm. There's no H. Like, you never heard Shirley Caesar say, take me to H flat. Like, that, <laughs> you, even if you're not a musician, you, you've never heard H flat, I flat. No such thing. K flat, K sharp. Right. Music only goes the first seven letters of the English alphabet, right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. let's put that with our whole theory of C being to the left. Just, just take a wild guess. Like if you're doing your ABCs, I got young kids. Right? What comes after C in the alphabet? D. Mm-hmm. So that means D is the next white key. Mm-hmm. What comes after D in the alphabet? Y'all take a wild, wild guess. E. All right. And then I always already said F. F is the key uh, uh, to the left of the three black keys. Right. So now you're back to F. So you already got your like C, F. Mm-hmm. You know that what's in between them is what's in between them in the alphabet. All right? C, D, E, F. There's the G. Mm-hmm. And then what did JP say? There's no H. So if you find yourself, this is H and L, M, N, O, P. Nope, nope. After G, always in the alphabet, you start all over. And now you got your A, B, C. What can somebody do to just kind of get those notes in their system? Because first, I mean, you got to have recognition of the notes. Right. Um, there's different things that you could do um, as far as exercises. Um, one thing I would do is just get used to finding those, those Cs that are all over the piano. So just say C. Mm-hmm. And then go up here. Just mix it up so you get familiar with where the notes are mm-hmm. with both hands. And once you start to visualize where the C is and everything else, I mean, it's just, like you said, a matter of knowing the alphabet. But one thing that gets tricky for sometimes for some people is like the, the point where it starts all over when it gets to G. Like how it tricked me a little bit. I, I had to think about it. But hmm. once it gets to G, just always know that it's going to A next. So really focus on remembering that the A is coming after G. So G-A for Georgia. You can use G-A as the abbreviation for Georgia. Or right. What else can you think of for like for like that? General audience. General admission. Right. <laughs> I mean, you sitting way up there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, so, but think of G as like Z. Z, you know, if you're starting all over in the alphabet, Z is like at the end. And, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, now I know my ABCs. You're like back to the beginning. So just kind of get that. You know, in your system, just kind of visualize it. I know when I close my eyes, I can picture a piano. And all I got to do is is picture those two black keys, those three black keys. You can also remember, well, Michael Jordan is 2-3, and he played for the Chicago Bulls, C. So C, 2-3, like C and 2, right? And uh, so you can think of it like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that would be the beginning of it. So once you kind of got your notes down, you can... You know what I did when I was younger? I took uh, some scotch tape Mm -hmm. and I put it on the keys. And then I took just like a marker and I just kind of put C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Maybe some classical people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe they might frown upon that, but we're not classical. We're by ear. So we have a lot of unorthodox things. I mean, write on your keyboard if you have to. Mm -hmm. But get it in your system. And then at some point, you'll be able to take them off and you'll just know the notes, right? Right. I mean, repetition is the mother of skill. So it's important that you really just focus in on doing this over and over and to the point where you don't have to really think about it. Mm -hmm. So like Jermaine said, even though you put stickers on it, but press the note and say the note, you know, get it in your mental uh, side of things. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, Mm -hmm. C, just do it over. E, F, G. And then sometimes start at a different point. Maybe uh, start from the F and then keep going. So you know that the F, it's on the left side of the three black keys. So right. maybe you start from F. F, G. It might take a little bit of time for you to really think about this. Mm-hmm. You might have to say F and think G. You know, you might not have to be able to do it fast, but the key thing is to just do it like Nike because the more and more you do it, the more familiar you're going to get with the notes. And it'll happen pretty fast, watch. Right. And then every piano has what we call a middle C. It's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of where you sit. It's sort of the middle of the piano. Mm-hmm. The only thing is it, it sort of moves around depending on how big your keyboard. So right. this is an 88 key keyboard, which is the same as sitting down at a real like piano. Mm-hmm. And the C is typically four from the bottom. So that's the first C. That kind of trains us. So now we look mm-hmm. for the next C. There's the second. There's the third. 
and there's our middle C. Right. Now, if you're playing a smaller keyboard, then it'll be typically three from the bottom. Because the keyboard, it might be 62 keys, might be 70s, 61 and 76. So you'll know, though, it makes the same sound regardless of what piano you're on. Mm -hmm. And then also notice the shapes. Some of these shapes, look at the white key. Mm -hmm. It's an L. That's Mm -hmm. how you know you're talking about a C or F. Mm -hmm. Right. And those are going to be your important ones, L's, L's. Mm -hmm. So C and F's, they, they make an L shape. Look at your D kind of like an upside down T. Uh-huh. The G and the A also have the upside down T, right? And then look at the E, the E and the B. It's kind of like an inverted L, like a backwards L. So the E and the B, right? Think of like the L going the other direction like that. And then I think that covers everything. Right? Uh-huh. And then down here is the only one you get like an I. Right. And that's about it. So sometimes the shapes can help you out as well. Uh-huh. We got to talk about the black keys then. Okay, JG, I get the white keys. JP, y'all done broke that down. You stay true to your promise of this being a beginner webinar. Right, right. What do the black keys do? Are they just there for show? No, the black keys are there. They're, they're different notes and they're named differently. So basically you have sharps and you have flats. So anytime you have a white key... Uh, the tone that's a half step up to the right. Wait, wait, you can't be saying stuff. They don't know what a half step is. Oh, okay, you got me, you got me. <laughs> so we have, we, we're working with things called half steps and whole steps. So a half step, you can think of it as um, just going from one note to the next without skipping a note. So you can't skip anything, black, skip anything. white, everything. You can't skip. Right, right, right. So an, an, an example of that would be Going from E to F, right? Mm -hmm. There's no note in between. You're going right to the next note. Mm -hmm. So that's a half step. Now, let's say we go from E to this black key right here that you don't even know what it is yet. This is a whole step, and this is a whole step because we're skipping a note. So a half step is you're not skipping any notes. A whole step is you're skipping a note, and that's a whole step. It's like you're stepping over something. Yeah. Taking a whole step. Right, right, right. So let's give like many different examples, even with the different shapes. Cause you uh-huh. know, we talked about this is an L, this is a backwards L, this is a upside down T. Right, right. Cause uh, some people can be tricked. Like they get that that's a half step, but do uh-huh. they also get that that black note to that key is also a half step? Well, Why? Cause we're not skipping any notes. Well, it's a, it's a way that I see this. I mean, anytime you go from one black key to the next, to the next black key over, that's always going to be a whole step away. Always, yeah. Because you got a note in between. That's a whole step. This is a whole step. This is a whole step. Mm -hmm. Now, anytime you're like by the three black keys right here, and you go from one white key to the next, that's also a whole step. Because the black keys in between. Yeah, there's always a key in between. Now, anytime you see the... This part of the piano where the E and the F is, that's a half step. There's no notes in between. So when so, you're going from an L to an L. Right. Like L that way to uh-huh. the L that way. Exactly. So you can kind of visually see if there's a black key right there um, and you're looking at a white key and you see a, a black key in between, that's always going to be a whole step. But if you go from a white key to a black key. Right next door, though. It has right to be next right door. next door. That's a half step. So if you have all these black keys right here. And if you go from any white key and you go backwards to a black key or or forwards to a black key, that's always going to be a half step. So, so. can we give them a test? If you're in the chat room, sure. um, we see you guys in the house um, uh, on my phone. So uh, let's say mm-hmm. let's give let's do like a five question pop quiz for okay. them real quick. Anything, half step or whole step? What is JP playing? Did y'all catch that? One more time. Whole step or half step? You should have said... Whole step. Whole step. Why? Because we got a black key in between here, and we're skipping this black key. Okay. We're we're going past the neighbor and going to the other neighbor's house. (laughs) So, like, we skipped one house and then went to the next house over. So, Mm -hmm. basically, the black key is a half step. This is a whole step. Now, let's do another test. What about this? Mm. What do we have here? Come on now, make us proud, y'all. <laughs> make us proud. Half step or whole step? Half step. Half, Half step. step. Because there was absolutely nothing skipped. Right. 
Can you think? Let's let's throw a curveball at him. I don't know what you might think is a curveball to a beginner. To a beginner, um, how about this? Yeah, that's a curveball. Mm-hmm. What do y'all say? Be careful with this one. What is it? It's from a white key to a black key. JP says something about white keys to black keys, black mm-hmm. keys to white keys. So be careful. You should have said a whole step. Even though it's a white key to a black key, it is not the black key right next door. And there are some rare situations, like these two notes that are together, these two notes, that if you go from a white to a black key, it's still a whole step because you got a note in between. You got to remember, if there's a note in between, you're talking about a whole step. We don't care what kind of note. It's a whole step. Half steps have no notes in between. So don't Mm -hmm. get tricked by that. So now, when we talk about naming the black keys... Basically, like JP said, they're either half step, meaning skipping no notes, Mm -hmm. below a white note, or they're half steps above a white note. So in essence, you can have two names for a black key because you can look at it as it's like it's half step lower Mm -hmm. or half step higher. We'll tell you what we mean by that. So like that black note, like Mm -hmm. how could it have two names? Well, it can have two names because... It depends on the direction that you're coming from. So, um, let's say you're, you're driving down the street. Now, uh oh, I, mean, I, I think I'm, got, I'm gonna move my mic over here. I think that might is, be me too. Hopefully, you guys can hear that in the chat room. Okay, so let's say you, you're getting directions from somewhere and you're driving down the street. Now, you can make a left turn on one street, depending on the direction that you're coming from, mm-hmm. or you can make a right. So, let's say this is the street right here. Right? And this is the left side and this is the right side. So if you're coming from this direction, you're making a left, but you're still going down that same street. Mm. Now, let's say you're coming from this direction, which is the right side. You're still coming down this street. So that's why you can have two different directions. You can either go up to it or you can go down to it, but you're still going to that street. So that's why we have something called sharps and flats, because if you go down that street, but you're coming from the C right here, and you're going to the right. Or up. Or up. But you're still going down this street right here. That's considered to be a sharp. So anytime you make a right or go up, that's considered a sharp. So in essence, oh, in essence, I would call this note C sharp. Right. I, it's, it's, a, it's a type of C note that uh-huh. has been raised. Sharp right. means to raise. Exactly. But when you've heard people say, because people have always heard, you know, you hear somebody, take me to A flat. James uh-huh. Brown being like, put me in the D. <laughs> but he could have said D flat, flat which right, means right. take me a little lower because I could take this D and JP said, I could, I could make a left. Oh, we have some static issues. I could make a left and, or I can go down. Or remember this. The flat tire lowers the car. So mm-hmm. D go lower, D flat. Right. So that's going to be C sharp. That can be D flat. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, then, you know, you got other things going on here. Uh-huh. So some of y'all take a stab at this. If you know the white note to the left of it, and which would effectively make this note higher than that note, mm-hmm. right? Sharp means raise. Right. So you could say this is called A. What's that note? If that's C, do your alphabet. That's what? That's D. Mm-hmm. Since we're raising this note, going higher, that's D sharp. sharp. Mm-hmm. But it also has another name. What's the note right here? Now, that note happens to be higher than the black note, so you have to literally lower, like the flat tire must be lowered. Uh So then we can call that, what note is that? That's a C, D, E, lower it, and that's an E flat. Now, that's one way to look at it, or you can look at it from a different perspective as um, looking at the note first and then saying, okay, whatever tone is to the left of that is going to be that sharp. Mm-hmm. And whatever notes to the right of that is it, going to be that flat. So just consider it. It's, it's a backwards way of thinking um, outside of, you know, focusing on the white key first. But if you focus on the black key first, this is just, it, it depends on if this works for you. You can say, okay, the note that's to the left of this black key will be considered C sharp. And then the note to the right will be D flat because D is to the right. So you can say to the left, that would mean this is the sharp note to the right. That's the 
the flat yeah, note. So that's another way to look at it too. Yep. So that would make this one D sharp or E flat. Right. This one, well, look what we have here. We have an F, we have a G, so that means we could say F sharp or G flat. Exactly. So yeah, that's that's one way to do it. Just hit the note and say, identify the ones that are on the outside. So G and A. Yep. So it's either G sharp or A flat. Now notice on our keyboard here, it's not smart to the sense. So it's either going to do flat notes, and we have it on flat, but yeah. our program here, that our technicians, you know, it could be sharp or flat. Right. But, you know, on our screen. It says uh, flat. Yeah, it says flat. So we can't say sharp and then it's going to change. Yeah, it's so not going to change with our. <laughs> no, it, we have it set to flat. So that's why you might be hearing us say sharp, but it's saying flat up there. So ignore the notes while we go through this demonstration. Actually, okay. we didn't even tell them. Like, so we hold that down, look on the screen. The flat is like a little B. It's right. not considered a B. It's 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 like a kind of a weird looking B. Yeah. It's like a B though. So notice right there, it says A, and then it's this little B. That's A flat. Right. I wish I could show them sharps, but we can't right now. Um, but sharps is like a pound, like on your phone, mm -hmm. like the pound symbol. We can um, make that switch while we talk. talk um, about it might be too hard for our technicians over there. It's all right, because we, we're going to be done with that. Mm -hmm. um, JP might make the switch. I mean, he's got he's got magical powers over there. I was just going to show my phone really quickly to to show you, like, um, what the sharp... Oh, it's on sharps now? Oh, okay. This nice. is live and uncut. <laughs> right. See, so now it's G sharp. We took that white note, right? So we literally changed it for you in our software. So that's like that's your notes. This one is either A sharp. They can't change it that fast though. It's gonna stay on sharp. Mm -hmm. Or B flat. Right. So you can't say in this webinar that we went too fast. You mm -hmm. gotta acknowledge we broke down your notes, your white, your black, the shapes of them, the colors of them. The next thing is scale. Remember Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Sister Act. She was like, la, 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 la. And they was la, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 And then, you know, the choir turned from a wreck to, like, winning competitions. Right. That was a part of a scale that they were singing. You don't have to be a musician to know what a scale sounds like. You've heard it. You've been in choir class. Like, JP, what is the most universal scale known to man? It's the major scale. What does it sound like? And around the world, some people know that as do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, right? We're not singers, but, you know, that's the scale. That is the major scale. And right. it's made up of either all white notes in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's any scale, major scale that's all black. No, nope, not at all. No. Guess what? Because you need, you need seven notes to make a, a major scale. Right. And there's only five Remember, they repeat themselves, so there's only five unique, like, physical black notes. So you mm -hmm. can't have a major scale. If it takes seven and we only got five, that means do some math. How many white notes do you need, even if you use every black right. note? You're going to have six. Yeah. Not enough. You, you're not enough. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to have five. Five what? <laughs> black <laughs> notes. <laughs> Hey, this is live, folks. <laughs> so you're going to need another two white notes, even if you use all um, Stay with five. It. But mm -hmm. there is a major scale that has all white notes. Yes. And that's the easiest scale that any musician should know. It's so, the C major scale. So the C major scale is always going to, you know, you're going to start from C and just go from C to C without skipping any notes, just like I did. So if you say after this webinar that you can't play the C major scale, we come into your house, Kicking and what are we doing door, to that? <laughs> and showing you that scale. Because they, they went too fast. I didn't understand that. It's all white notes. Now, I will give you this, the fingering for it. So, like, say mm -hmm. someone wanted to practice this tonight. They, right. want, they want to play scales till their fingers fall off. Uh -huh. What would be the best way to practice the C major scale, which is all white notes? Now, before I do that, I want to tell you guys that practice it slow because if you're a beginner, your fingers probably aren't strong enough to kind of play it like I'm playing it right now. I've, I, have, I have a lot of years of experience. 
So make sure you take your time, but what you need to know is that um, you're going to do one, two, three. So that's your thumb is your first finger. That's one, two, three, four, five. So as we talk about the finger in position, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? JP, I got a beginner question. Yes, sir. When I do it on my left, my thumb is always the same number. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, no matter what. So yeah. on this, it's backwards. One. Two, three. Your thumb is always one, but it's backwards. But the same finger. So your your thumb is one. Your index finger is one. Your, I mean, no. <laughs> two, two. Two. Come on, baby. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> your, your index finger is two. Your middle finger is three. Your ring finger is four. And your pinky is five. It doesn't matter which hand. Numbers don't change. Nope. So how will we do a major scale on our right hand? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, and then when, once you get to the third note, you're gonna put your thumb under to F. So let me do it slow for you. You see that? Cross over. Right. Cross under. Now, Should they do it going back down? Yeah, and then do it back down. recommend that you get a metronome. Most smartphones, if you have a smartphone, you have mm -hmm. access to a metronome. So this is good because it'll help you to practice in a certain time. So you can start off very, very slow and you can actually track your progress because you'll be able to see how slow you started and then you right. can gradually speed up the stronger your fingers get to as well. I was looking for a metronome on here. I'm in trouble. I don't have a metronome. And we are live. I cannot download one that quickly. Do you have one on your computer? Uh, I have. I have a metronome right here. But, but it, it literally clicks. Right. And like JV said, you want to start it real slow because you want to do it at a pace that you can do it accurately. Mm -hmm. Because the fingers, it's not that the fingers, they say muscle memory, it's really mind memory. It's this mind-body connection that you get as you repeat the same thing over and over. But if you do it too fast and you're fumbling and you're not using the same finger and stuff, see, there it is. There but that's go. probably too fast. How many beats per minute is that? I'm slowing it down. So. And BPM, that's called beats mm -hmm. per minute. Literally, like if you had a clock, and you counted 60 seconds, how many beats would you hear in 60 seconds? So 60 beats per minute is basically what a clock, like the hand of a clock, the seconds, that's 60 beats per minute. Uh -huh. So even if you didn't have a metronome yeah. and you had a clock, mm -hmm. you could kind of visually get the time of 60 minutes. Right. I mean, 60 beats per minute, right? Uh -huh. And like I said, this is basically your time where you, you practice. So when you hear the metronome, this is the tempo that I would play the scale. And you can do it slower than this. So, one, two, three. Four. Cross under. Mm hmm And if you need to take a break. Because it's too much for you. Yeah, then fun. come back down. Okay? You can do it even slower than that if you need to, because I mean, one thing about being a beginner is that the the thing that you have to get over is just the dexterity, and it's going to take you slowing it down because we don't want you to get overwhelmed. So do it slow and do it good, because if you try to do it too fast, you're going to kind of miss out on the opportunity to really perfect what you're playing. So do it slow. That's the key to success. Yep. Even slower than 60 beats if you have to. Right. And there's websites like freemetronome.com. Mm -hmm. Any music program will have one. Or your phone, your smart, just type in metronome in your app store. I yep. guarantee you, you'll see a lot of free ones too. Yep. Tons of them. Mm -hmm. So that's the major scale. The major scale is like the building blocks of songs. It's right. like it, it it tells you where you are in music because songs basically come from the scale. Like, right. like the scale is like I would blood, say that, DNA. Of, I, I would say the scale is kind of like the alphabet in a sense where like music is a language. So just like your alphabet forms words, your scales form chords. And 
your chords are like words. You know what I mean? So once you start to speak the language of music, your scale is the basics, like your ABCs that you need to, to put together words and sentences. So you can't write anything without knowing first your ABCs, and you can't play without first knowing your scales. Yep. So we're going to teach you an easy way to form any scale. Mm -hmm. We taught you the easiest scale because it's all white notes. Right. But music, there's... We didn't really cover this, but there's 12 notes. You, you mm -hmm. kind of did the math on your own. There's seven, like, white notes, physical right. white notes. And then there's, like, five black notes. If you add that up, there's only 12 notes you're going to hear on this piano. There's mm -hmm. not, can I find a 13th sound on this piano, JP? There's not going to be a 13th nah. sound. Nah. There's only 12. There's not going to be less than 12. There's right. not going to be more. Then every song you've ever heard in the whole wide universal world mm -hmm. has come from these 12 notes. Right. Okay, that means that there's 12 different sort of planets. Mm -hmm. So C happens to be like Earth. It's just one planet you can play in. Right. But the singer may not be able to sing in C. It may be too high or too low. Right. And so the singer may need to be in a lower key. What's lower than C? They may have to be in B. Which has a totally different scale associated to it. Because it's his own planet. Right, exactly. Like, for example, don't worry about learning this scale, but can we compare the sound? Uh -huh. Don't even put the keyboard on there. Because I don't want people to be like, I'm confused. Just compare the sound of the C major scale. To B? To B. Actually, oh yeah, that's the B scale. Hello. I thought it was... <laughs> now... Wait, wait, wait. Then, <laughs> uh, now, how, do you, how does that sound to the C major? See? So it would be like being in a different, we could even call these different countries because let's just say there's a way to say hello in every language, right? right? Uh -huh. But if I'm in America, if I'm in C major, uh -huh. right? I called them planets before, now let's call them countries. If I'm in America, I say hello, hello. Uh -huh. If I'm in France, do you know what it is? I think it's bonjour. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> I might have like to that. Google that one. <laughs> Hello in France. But you get the point. That would be like being in B major, right? Right. It's the, yeah, I was right. But that's well, on, the Mac has a program called bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah. Bonjour. That would be like being in B major. It's the same hello, right? Right, right, right. But different language. Different language. Well, it's... it's or different country. Different same country. language. Same oh. thing that you're trying to say. Right. Or I would say, like, it's kind of like you can be in a different county, um, but have different cities. So let's say, like, th this is one county, but this might be a uh, certain city like L.A., this might be Burbank, this might be, you know, different names, but all in the same county. Maybe that's not a good example. I like, hey, I like, who <laughs> like country? Who <laughs> like the country analogy? I'm trying to be deep. <laughs> trying to be deep. Well, yeah. I mean, the only reason I like the country analogy, because... We're, we are saying the same thing. Right. Like the whole world is saying the same thing. We, we all are saying, I love you. Uh -huh. We're all saying hello, goodbye. It's just in a different way. In a different way. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's the same scale, but it's in B, uh -huh. right? So how do you play that scale? I want you to remember this. It's back to that whole step, half step thing JP was talking about. Right. Half steps are from key to key with no keys in between. Whole steps always skip a key with one key in between. Uh oh. I think I know a song like this. <laughs> That's a whole step, baby. <laughs> and we digress, we digress. But just remember this why won't he wear white when hot? Uh -huh. Why won't he wear white when hot? My wife told me this one day in summer. I was wearing black clothes. She was like, why? She said, other, why won't he wear white when hot? And I said, you know what? That's how you do major scales. That's, that's perfect, man. <laughs> because perfect. think about what's going on here. Y, that's a W. The mm -hmm. first letter of Y is a W. Right. You have to go a whole step. So that's, that's your whole step from C to 
D, it gives you the first note of your scale. Okay, why won't? Won't. Won't starts with a what? That's a whole step. So that means we got to skip. Do we go here? No, that would be a half step. We have to go. Okay, so why won't? We got our first two notes taken care of with the why won't. Mm -hmm. Why won't? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the H, right? If your breath humming, everybody knows the H sound, right. right? That's a half step. Where's the half step on this keyboard? See, so we got our why won't he? Uh, it's kind of tricky because the, it's happening in between the notes. Right? Mm -hmm. Why won't he wear? That's a whole well, step. Whole step. Mm -hmm. Okay, why won't he wear w w white? <laughs> That's the whole step. When another whole step. Got to skip that black note. And then... Hey, I, I had attack, man. Definitely I had, hot. I had attack. <laughs> That's definitely hot. Right? So basically, the why won't he wear white when hot, it tells you why won't he do a mint when his breath is hot. Right. That's not the formula. It's why won't he wear white when hot. So basically, you could be on any note. Uh, if, if there's a workbook, we'll, we'll try to put it in the chat room later mm -hmm. or we'll send it out in an email or something. Mm -hmm. Can you, do you guys have, I wish we were more prepared. Do you guys have it? If, if, if I think it's in the drop box. You might be able to load it in here uh, soon. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, that would be a good thing to do. Uh, we'll do it in other keys, but try it on your own. Like start on here and just do the why, won't, he, where, that's wrong, white, that's wrong, when, no it's not, hot, that's a half, oh, you, oh okay, man, man, he off today, he off, <laughs> nah, because he was doing it, I was like, he said, why, no, no, because, because, because it, it, it happens in between, because the, the why won't he wear white when hot is the distance, not the note, so when I say why, I'm talking about what I'm about to hit. Oh, I'm so like, I'm, I, like, I'm talking about what I'm about. Okay. So, so let's go to G. So I'm if I say why, in. what is he talking about? I'm talking about what's about to happen. What's the yeah. distance? So that's the yes. A. Won't he? Now we got to go half set. Where white when? This one's tricky. And then hot. So you can apply it to any one of the 12 keys and you have no excuses as a beginner. We're giving you the secrets. They're not teaching it like making it easy out there. They're making it hard. You got to know sheet music. Right. They're, they're just giving you the form. We're trying to give you easy ways to remember this stuff because we know how, how hard music can be, but music can be fun. Okay, mm -hmm. so you said if scales are like the, the letters, uh -huh. then you got these things you already kind of alluded to called chords. Right. Because, I mean, nobody's going to play a song like... That's not how you play a song. Right. Those beautiful chords you were playing in the beginning, uh -huh. that's when you hold down multiple notes at the same time. Right. Chords have to have... Some people say two notes, but usually about three notes, at least three notes uh -huh. to make a chord. Like, what's an example of a chord? Like, how does it sound? Like a C major chord. So probably one of the most familiar chords ever. Mm -hmm. Like the ice cream truck. Like, like you could be like, mm, like, play like, boom. <laughs> what, what's going on? <laughs> Why don't you take your right hand and do this? <laughs> oh, I'm like, what? Like that, right? <laughs> boom, boom. Right? It's just, it's the most, it's the <laughs> happiest, like, gumpy, but, but that major chord. Uh -huh. Like, if you're playing gospel music, see, that major chord in that context sounds like the ice cream truck coming. It's happy. It's happy. Yeah. But all you need to, like, if you know that one major chord, mm -hmm. like, you could play something like, Lord, I lift your name on high, right? Right. Like, right now, like, you guys could, like, literally, like, JP, take us there with just knowing a major chord. Knowing mm -hmm. a major chord. So one one thing we're going to get into is, like, you can take the chord and invert it, but I'm just going to keep it in root position, so... You can play a C major chord, and then play the same C major chord over a different bass note, and then go to the F major. 
So these are all simple, just basic chords. Yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. pretty bland. But don't even do the that note. Just three notes, three chords. C, F, and G. Lord, I lift your name on high. Right. No, no, just C, F to G. Lord, I lift your name on high. There it is. Lord, I love thee. Your praises. That's, that's not how. That is how it goes. <laughs> I was like, you, then you play. Oh yeah, you're right. Come on, I okay. haven't played this in so ah. long. <laughs> you, you're doing the passing chord, but yeah. we, this is the fundamentals of gospel uh, for total. Uh, uh. In the next webinar, we'll cover past and stuff. But but my point is, like, we could play something like that with three chords. Right. C major, F major. G major. Now we're about to teach you how to take a scale, which you know, why won't he wear white when hot, the all white notes, and how to find the chords. And it's very, very easy. Uh -huh. Can you say every other? Every other. Give me a beat to that. Every other. Boom to boom. Every <laughs> other. Boom to boom. Every other. Boom to boom. Every other. Every other. Every other, ooh, every other. Every, turn my mic up. Every other, every other, every other, every 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 other, every other. All right, all right. Okay, <laughs> all right. How do we play chords from a scale? Just take every other. Mm -hmm. How does so? If I'm on C, you take every other note. So basically, what Jermaine is saying is that. Um, you start off with whatever tone you, you want. So you can start with C, you can start with E, you can start with F. It doesn't matter. But from there, that's your starting point. So you're going to go to every other note. Of to, the scale. Of the scale or of the tone that you're on to form a chord. But it, it works better in the key of C because there's no other black key. So you can actually see it better. But every other note of the scale is really what happens. But um, let's say you want to start with C, right? And do a C major chord. So you start on C. And this is referring to the scale. So in any other key that you're in, you would refer to the scale. So we got C, and then we skip a note, because every it's other. Every other. And then you skip another note, because it's every other note. Mm -hmm. So now we have a C major chord. How would you finger that? Because we're talking about total beginners. Right. And I know that's a, probably a question. Uh-huh. Well, you would do, most of the time when you're playing major chords and major triad chords, you're going to do one, three, five. And the one is your thumb, the three is your middle finger, and then your pinky, that's your five. So it's one, three, five. Mm. And this is a C major chord, which is thumb on C, your middle finger is on E, and then your pinky is on G. Yep. And literally, you now we don't have enough time to like cover the whole thing, right. but... The scale basically gives you the building chords of songs. Like, mm -hmm. And songs really come down to happy chords, which is major, right? Mm -hmm. Chords come down to serious, like, yeah. you know, minor, mm -hmm. right? And this will be our next webinar and things like where we kind of like really break down different chords. But between major and minor... Like, you pretty, that's happy and sad. Like, how right. many other emotions you, like, you bring the wife home roses and she gonna be happy. And if you skip a few Valentine's Day, she gonna be. She gonna be sad. She gonna hurt you. She gonna hurt you. That's the mm -hmm. array of emotions. And music kind of takes you through all of it to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. But within this scale, you got all of those, but you have to go through each tone of the scale. Right. Oh, we didn't cover that. The number system. Oh, yeah. That's you, important. You got to number your scale. We we got so carried away that we didn't cover it. But mm -hmm. literally every tone of that scale, there's seven unique tones. All right. Right? You got to give it a number. So one, two, that would be D in this key, in mm -hmm. the key of C. E is three. F is four. G is five. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not going too fast, I hope. A is six. And B is seven. Now, the cool thing about that, you know, remember the country analogy? Say he's in another key. He's in France. Uh -huh. 
it's like having a translator because right. I don't know how to say hello, goodbye, thank you, I love you in France. Right. I know how to say it in English. I don't know how to say it in French. But what if I had a translator there saying, what if you can go anywhere in the world? Uh-oh, that's when I turn. Yeah. You can go anywhere in the world, and there was this universal like language. Uh-huh. That's the number system. Because right. if, if I'm talking to JP, he says, go to the one, uh-huh. he's basically giving me a universal language. The right. one is relative basically to whatever key I'm in. Right. Because every key has a one. Like, every language has hello. Mm -hmm. Every key has a two. Every language has goodbye. Every key has a three. So basically, once you know the major scale, Mm -hmm. you know, following the system we just talked about, and you number it, that gives every key, like, its universal language. It gives it a number system. Yeah, and the number system helps you to identify a lot of different things that happen within the scale. Um, Use the number system to identify... Chords, you use the number system to identify something called chord progressions that we haven't got into, which is kind of like patterns. Your, your patterns, but you can think of it like this. Notes form scales, like Jermaine said, scales form chords, chords form progressions, and progressions form songs. So when you think about the number system and, and the scale, the, the scale in the number system is like your alphabet. And then once you get into chords, chords are kind of like your words when you're communicating. Yep. And then when you get into chord progressions... I know where you're going with this. Progressions are like your what? Sentences. Sentences. So it's like... <laughs> it's communication. So mm-hmm. when you think about it from that perspective... And songs are like... Paragraphs, paragraphs stories, chapters of books. Yeah, songs stories. are like some you know someone is telling a story through a song. So once you put together this language and know how to use it, and it becomes effortless. That's what music is. It's a language. It's a way of communication. Right. Mm-hmm. So you know your notes. You know your scales. Right. You know your number system, which is just numbering that scale one to seven. Uh-huh. You know that every other, every every other of the scale gives you, <laughs> gives you chords. Uh-huh. Now I'm gonna give you a trick here. We already covered the first chord of any key. It's that chord that's on the first tone. Right. Now we could talk in numbers because you understand that. It's C major in the key of C, right? All right, C major. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, we're going to give you uh, an expert tip, or at least not expert, but something you wouldn't learn, like, for a long time in lessons. One, four, five. Remember that. How can they remember one, four, five? One, four, five. One, four, five. One, four, five. You just have one... Um... I don't even know how to do If you have a 45 millimeter gun. (laughs) You only need one. (laughs) That's a good one. You only need one 45. Right. Second Amendment. (laughs) He's a proud Second Amendment. You know, he believes in the land, the law of the land. That's a good one. That's a good one. That man, see, we unorthodox with our training. That's why you got to come over to the gospel music training (laughs) center. You only need one 45 and your word. Right. But if they knocking at you, your word is going to be your sword, and your forty-five is going to be your. <laughs> My grandpa was a pastor, and he always had his forty-five. So one, four, five. Uh-huh. Pretty much, that's how you play most. Like a lot of songs can be played with one, four, five. And the great thing about it is, you could go to the first tone of the scale, uh-huh. skip every other. That's your C major. Go to the fourth tone of the scale. One, two, three, four. Skip every other. Every other. See, that's F major. And and the great thing about it, one, four, five, they're always major. They're going to be your major chords. They're the primary only chords. primary chords. They're the only major chords in your key. Mm-hmm. The rest of them are going to be minor and maybe right. on some other stuff that we're not going to talk about. And then the five is right next to the four. So that's that's your G. And I'm playing it with my left hand. I really should be playing it like that. Yeah. Right. So, like Jermaine said, these are going to be your primary chords, and these are the keys, or the major chords that you're going to find in keys. So, you only need one, four, five. You can even play Amazing Grace, Uh because you played it fancy in the beginning. Uh Got everybody all scared, like, oh, God, when am I going to be able to do that? But, I mean, if you... Like, if you were a beginner and you just wanted to, like, show your spouse or your kids that you can play Amazing Grace, it doesn't have to have all the fancy stuff right now. Mm-hmm. That's another webinar. That's getting in the Gospel Music Training Center and really training yourself. But you could follow me. I'm not a singer, but I'm willing to sacrifice live. Right? No, no, no fancy. I'm just, just, I'm just putting you in the key. Okay, put me in the key. Because you need some help getting I go, in the key. I go. You go. <laughs> you slide up to the key. Oh. Amazing grace. 
See, you adding stuff. Oh, okay. This I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna keep it simple. Let's start one more time. All right, here we go. He's only here's gonna, your key. Here's your key. Okay, so you're only gonna use the one, four, or five, right? right? Just to show somebody, basically, basically the stuff we've covered today. Okay. Can let them play Amazing Grace. All right. Amazing. I'm not a singer. Zen Grace. I'm just inverting the chord. It's the same chord. Nah, you can't do that. You can't do that, JP. Okay, I'm gonna keep see, it simple. See, I, see, I JP's such an expert at this that he can't help it. But that's that's. Yeah, that's a testament to as you learn music, you're going to know all this extra stuff. But right. on purpose, we're just trying to like really make this basic. So he, it's hard for him to do this because it's not technically, you know, the, like, you know, that way. But we're just doing it for the sake of this. So ready? he's going to keep it like this, right? Right. Are you ready? Yep. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he done put the Beethoven in there. All right, I'm ready for real. Amazing grace. There you go. How sweet. That's the F. The sound. There's the C. That same. There's a C. A red like. There's the five, which is the G, right? I once was long. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, Come on, but now but if you lost. Now, <laughs> I'm found. What was I? I was blind no, no, no just it go minor i was i was about to do it it can go minor but okay, that's the there. next webinar right i was blind but now i see you know <laughs> he put the the super bowl ending on there but um man i just sang to y'all i don't do that i'm not a singer i'm not a singer but man, you are you are showing up Man. Yeah, I mean, so if somebody wants to use their ear, all you have to do is ask yourself, when does it require a chord change? Uh -huh. Now, truly, there's more chords in this song, but my point is, like, and what JP demonstrated is you can play a lot of songs out there with just three chords. That's your primary chords. Right. You know, even Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, I know we had our discrepancy with a passing chord, but you could literally play it with the three chords. The right. one four, five. Remember, mm -hmm. you only need 145. 145. <laughs> so what we literally did was we introduced you to notes. We introduced you to scales, mm -hmm. number system, chords, and believe it or not, you just played a pattern. Mm -hmm. One, four, five. Right. That's sort of our beginner's path. Mm -hmm. We call that beginner basement in the gospel music training center. Right. And We've got foundational lessons. I mean, hopefully what we've covered here kept your attention, number one. Uh -huh. You know, it gave you a lot of knowledge and help. That's what we're here. I want to leave you better than we found you. Right. But we want to talk about the Gospel Music Training Center because we strongly believe uh, that we've got the resource to help thousands of people out there that have always felt like they, they they don't know how to get started with music. They feel mm -hmm. like it's too hard. Maybe they've tried before. And people have just made it real boring. And, right. You know, real fancy when it don't need to be that way. Right. Definitely. I mean, we've learned through the School of Hard Knocks. So the best thing that we could do is come up with a faster, easier way to learn how to play the piano. And me, myself, personally, I didn't come up in the era of the internet and YouTube and Google and all these computers and stuff. So... Everything, every chord, every progression that we learned, it was straight through our ears. And through doing that, we came up with some unique systems to teach you how to play. Absolutely. And it's all inside of this Gospel Music Training Center. Can can y'all go to my computer? Because I, I kind of want to like show some folks what it is. You literally log into this from anywhere in the world and you will see JP. I mean, there's over like what? 600 lessons? I, I would say like 700. He said 700 lessons, you yes. all. And uh, and here, right, you can see, uh, you know, on the homepage is always the latest. Lesson. I mean, we, we basically teach every song you probably played or heard mm -hmm. in church. Not played, but heard in church. You know, like Intentional, right? See, it shows up. That's a pretty popular song. And then I click search. And then, you know, in just seconds, there's JP here. It's a beginner basement lesson at that, and he's gonna be breaking down. Look at him. He... Right? Your intention, right? 
And he, so he always plays it first and he breaks it down step by step. And we've got this thing. And that's just the song lessons. But really for beginners here, because I know you all are starting from the beginning, you want to go through our foundational lessons, right? And it's always on the screen at the top. It says foundations. And literally we have it step by step. If you think like fundamental factory, chord county, pattern paradise, song station, ear elevator, and they've got a number of lessons under each. So what we took you through was kind of like lesson one, Mm -hmm. maybe lesson two of fundamental factory. Like what we kind of did, this little thing we did, you know, it's kind of like that, but you're going to go way deep into it. And you already know our style. Right. And it's structured. You got tests and quizzes at the end of each of those videos. So we want to definitely make sure that you actually retain this information because this is the foundation of your plan all across the board from understanding songs and progressions and everything. And once you get this under your belt, you're going to be able to play a lot faster than most people who don't have it. Absolutely. And that's why you can see like progress. We keep up with your progress, you know, based on if you're answering the quizzes correctly. Mm-hmm. I happen to be 100% because I kind of know this stuff and I went through it. <laughs> right. right. And so that's like the foundational lessons. But uh, GMTC is your number one source for learning gospel music from A to Z. Right. And we're not just talking about the easy stuff. You will graduate. And we have seen people go from not knowing anything. We taught them the L shapes and the, and the inverted T's right. and the black and the white notes, the whole steps, the half steps, the white one, he wear white one, hot, the mm-hmm. chords. Like they went step by step. And now they're speaking the language of music, right. playing it. Some of them are teaching it. Yes. Some of them are ministers of music. Music now. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing it really fast because I, I, I communicate with a lot of our students inside the club. So we've been doing this since 2008 and I've seen the progress of certain musicians just grow from not even playing in church to actually gigging and doing things. And they said this has really changed their life from, you know, being able to take what they hear and play it and then also just be able to provide for their families because Music is a way of, you know, work too as well. So yep. there's some great things that are happening you know, with the gospel music training scene. Absolutely. So would you allow us just a couple seconds to tell you about GMTC, how you can join it, how cost effective it is? Because when mm-hmm. I mean, people come to us saying, Jermaine, I'm paying a piano teacher $40 a week, oh, yeah. and they're still teaching me Mary Had a Little Lamb with one finger. And we already showed you for free how, at least how to start playing three fingers. I've talked to somebody. They said they were paying their piano teacher $100. And they, they just said they were about to fire them because they weren't really getting anywhere. And, you know, once you pay that money, you really don't get a return on your investment unless you're practicing it, unless you're actually videotaping your piano teacher. Right. But the thing about the Gospel Music Training Center is you're investing in yourself and these lessons, you can always go back to them at any time. And that's the yep. big difference between paying an instructor and as for a physical instructor that's going to be there with you and, and being with us, we're always going to be there with you all the time. That's true. Because uh, even if like, even if they're good right. and you get home, you're like, what just happened? Like exactly. they better send you home with homework. Yeah. You better have your own like personal recording. Exactly. You know, because a lot of people, they go back next week, not having as much progress <clears throat> as they would have hoped for. Right. And it's another hundred dollars. The teacher don't be like, you know what, since you didn't learn your skills this week, I'm going to delay. You know, no, nah, they need to eat. Right, right, so right. So that must be Hollywood market, $100. Uh, even in the Midwest, even mm-hmm. $30 a week. Yeah. You know, you're paying hundreds a month. So well, I don't know where he was from, but he was saying that, you know, he was very frustrated with, with paying that much money. I, and I myself personally, um, when I was studying jazz, I had a piano instructor too as well, just to give me some different insight and different perspectives on you know, the thought process behind jazz music. And I was paying a hundred bucks a lesson. Wow. Yeah, that that can be, um, you know, if you got it, for sure, you know, have a private instructor. But when it comes to gospel music, uh-huh. a lot of these instructors, if they are gospel musicians, they came through the school of hard knocks, unfortunately. Right. Uh-huh. So a lot of things they, they teach you won't be systematically. You're not no. going to be getting why won't he wear white when high. No. You won't be getting 145. You uh-huh. won't have these interesting ways to retain and remember the information. Right. And we, we this is a, a company. We've got the resources. We've got a big team. We've got this studio. we got all these different cameras. This is what we do. Like, right. we take pride in this kind of instruction. Very much so. So allow us to just kind of go through a couple uh, slides here that will really get you 
uh, introduced to the Gospel Music Training Center, and then it'll be up to you at the end if you want to join us. We'd love to have you in there. Uh, we do all kinds of things in the Gospel Music Training Center. Neither you're a GMTC member or you're not, but if you are, oh man, we open, we we roll the red carpet out for you, and there's nothing that we don't do for our members. No songs we don't cover, no lessons. We even do technology stuff, yeah. all this stuff I don't even know that JP got on the side. Mm -hmm. We do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We teach choir kind of stuff. We bring guests in. We uh -huh. got the organ over there. I mean, right. there's no part of the church service we really like don't connect. So how do you ensure, going to my computer, how do you ensure you continually sharpen your craft without spending an arm and a leg? Well, the answer is a gospel music training center. It boasts over 500 hours of, I have to update this. You said six. Yeah. Probably 600 hours of instruction, all aimed specifically for gospel players and taught by gospel players, right? Not a classical teacher buying a, a gospel book from Guitar Center and like teaching you Amazing Grace. Like this is a real stuff, mm -hmm. right? Gospel Music Training Center works even if you've been playing and pra practicing for years and have been unable to take your skills to a professional sounding level. It works if you have very little musical training as you saw today or experience and you feel that you can't learn successfully without an in-person instructor. We're here to tell you, you can learn on your computer. You just have to have the right information in the right order. It'll work even if you're a trained sight reader, you come from the other side and it, you realize if you're gonna play in church or even if you just wanna play what you feel, um, you know, you can't rely on that sheet music. And uh, so it's for trained sight readers who wrongly believe that you can survive in the church service by getting sheet music to all the songs because you really can't, especially in charismatic churches. Um, and even if you've had success learning chords and new music on YouTube or something, um, but you've never reached that professional sounding level because some of the information is missing. And you've been surviving by learning chords from fellow musicians and guessing which chords and notes to play, but you want like a systematic uh, way to learn. Well, Gospel Music Training Center is for you. I mean, there's so many lessons. I mean, like, what kind of genres are we talking about? There's not anything we haven't explored. Mm -mm. Do you hear, JP, they're in our other studio. Yeah, I heard uh, it. Keep it down in there. You know what we're doing in there? They don't, I don't think we put the webinar on our schedule, so we probably got some people mixing and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is a real business. This is what we do. It's what we do. We love it. We love it. So tell us about some of the genres, like subgenres of gospel music in there. Well, when you think about gospel music, um, you have many different genres. You have traditional, you have contemporary. You have CCM, you have contemporary worship. Contemporary Christian music. Contem yeah, contemporary Christian music. You have worship. So um, what, what we do is make sure that we mix it up from week to week where you get balance. You know, for someone who needs worship, there's over 700 lessons in here. So going back to when we first started, if you need worship or you need contemporary, it's broken down into different segments. So you can actually use something called tags. And with the tags, what that allows you to do is search for certain lessons within a certain tag. So if you want a contemporary lesson, you click on the tag and it'll take you to all the contemporary lessons. If you need something traditional and you more, you're more of a traditional old school player and you want to grow within that genre, you can click on the traditional tag and that'll take you to all the traditional songs. If you need worship and you want to get more, uh, more perspectives on different chords and voices for worship, you can do that too as well. So we don't leave any stone untouched, we try to cover everything that you need to make you a strong playing gospel musician. Yep, and you speak of the organization, how we tag everything, we right. even tag it by key. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're like, I really want to get good in C major, right. or you know, F major, mm -hmm. or you now know your flat, so A flat, right? Mm -hmm. I want to get good in A flat. Um, you can go find songs and lessons specifically for those keys. For anything that you need. Yep. So back to my presentation, right? We got weekly song lessons. And like JP said, we got like 700 past ones that you can go through. But then every week, we're always updating it. So we're putting new lessons in, weekly song lessons, teaching you basic. And once you're ready, advanced approaches to learning songs. And um, I keep putting this 500 in here. I got to update. Remind me to update that gotcha. because the last time I did this webinar, it was 200 hours ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. And obviously, we keep adding lessons. So, you know, and we also do, yeah, it was a long time ago when I last did this. Uh, we also do live training. Yes. Right? I definitely think that's one thing that separates, you know, us from anybody that wants to teach you or 
or put you into their program, we actually give you the opportunity to access questions and interact with us. We don't just sign you up and then say, hey, go on your way, find all the lessons you need, right. and that's it. No, you actually can communicate with us because we really care. We want right. you to grow. We want you to succeed. And I'm always inside the Gospel Music Training Center talking to people, Jermaine too as well. But we have a designated time for you to talk to us either on the phone or you can actually post your questions on the web. And then, you know, we have that. And it's considered to be the live training. Yep, live training. We do it every other week. So yeah. there's always a time you could come on and you got us live. Mm -hmm. uh, JP said earlier, we got quizzes and things set up because we want to make sure you understand the material. So there's like hundreds of questions on the interactive quizzes mm -hmm. that will make sure you have a strong understanding. And uh, we give away free software, like Song Tutor's in there. And the cool thing about it is Song Tutor takes song files, these certain kind of files, JP as if it weren't enough, he includes the song files and then he we give you the software that we develop. Like I said, this is what we do, right? And um, I think, yeah, I have Song Tutor right here. Amazing Grace, right? If I click play, see? Y'all hear that? Yeah, look at it. I can slow it down. Look how slow we can go. Look how slow that is, because I changed the tempo, right? I can even walk through the song step by step. See how I'm doing that? I'm just pressing this button. So Song Tutor is an additional resource that will load on your computer, uh -huh. and even the lessons inside of GMGC can be opened in Song Tutor, and you could literally slow songs down. You could change the key. So if I want to learn Amazing Grace in the next key, like D, I can learn it because those are different countries. I can learn it in G, right. a different country. I can learn it in all the countries. Mm -hmm. And I can be able to say hello no matter where I am. I'm, I'm a globe trotter. Uh, a lot of musicians, they can only play in one country. Right. And so if they go to another country, they're lost. Mm -hmm. That's not good for church. You got to be able to play because there's I mean, all keys in church. All keys, and you never know what could happen in a church service. And, you know, it's always spontaneous moments that happen. So you want to make sure that you're able to play in all your keys, in all your countries, and you do it fluently because, like we said, music is a language, and you want to be able to speak it fluently. Absolutely. So we have an offer for you. We hope that uh, those who are, you know, serious and passionate about this will take us up because, like I said, there's no there's no substitute for this online resource. And there's a reason we've been around for so many years since the year 2000 doing this. You don't stay that many years, you know, uh, with something that's just a hobby. This is a real serious thing for us. We've right. taught uh, musicians in over 103 countries. And uh, people come to us from everywhere. So everything that you're going to get is right here on the screen. Weekly video lessons, live training, digital products, uh, foundational lessons, quizzes. You get to interact in a chat room and private message with other members around the world. Free song learning software. Uh, I didn't even put the 700 hours. That's the training, right? The 700 hours uh, of training, traditional, contemporary, urban, CCM, and... Uh, and three months in the Gospel Music Training Center is normally $111. Uh -huh. um, that's, that's for three months. For three so months, from definitely. here, three months, $111. Because you guys are on this webinar with us, here's what we are offering. It's only $94, uh -huh. right? And that's per quarter. So you can stay quarter to quarter. We like the, like real school, right. right? This is one quarter, like semester, First but, semester, you know, yeah. quarter. And then if you want to move on to the next quarter, you tell us, you know, you want to move on to the next quarter. Mm -hmm. You want to stay. It's our hope. People stay with us for life. Like right. they, once they get in, they say, I want to always be connected to this. Exactly. Cause I'm going to go spend it at McDonald's, Chipotle, uh, if I go spend it watching, you know, Denzel, we both love Denzel. We right. love to take our wives. But this is something you really want to do. $94 for something you really want to do for three months. Right. And you, we paying instructors, you know, if we want to learn jazz from a pro, we paying people $100. People in Hollywood playing $100 a lesson. For an hour, For though. an hour. For an hour. 700 hours, mm -hmm. three months, right. $94. 
uh, drop in the bucket. And get access to everything. I mean, you can't you can't lose because whatever you need, whether it be traditional gospel, any area, whether it, Oregon, we have Oregon lessons too as well. You can't lose. And like we said, we're going to be here with you. So we'll never leave you as long as you don't leave us. All right. Three <laughs> months. Get your quarterly membership. Now, if three months... Is if you can't do that, we have another option, but it's gonna it's gonna be more like the one hundred eleven dollars because that's the thirty seven dollar a month. Right. A lot of people they want to save even more money because thirty seven thirty seven thirty seven is one eleven. Mm-hmm. You can get that knocked down to ninety four, locked in for life. As long as you want to stay with the ninety four, you're locked in. Mm-hmm. So you can either lock in the day at the ninety four. Or you could click and get the 37. Both options are available when you uh, click the button. It should be on the, the screen. I look in, it should, um, okay, it's on there. Uh, just click it and, uh, and you pick the option that's, that's good for you. No pressure. If you can't do it right now, it's okay. You can always call us too. Um, the number to the department, one eight seven seven. Can we type this in the chat room as well? one 856 4187 And right when you hear it, press 807. And then that'll take you to somebody. If you just want to talk to somebody, they can get you going as well. But mm-hmm. easiest option is just a 94 a quarter. And right. uh, you are in there. In you get there. to see JP every single week. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. You can't. Where else can you, can you do that? 700 hours. And just think of a song. Like, it's probably in there. Like... Like, um, I'm going to go back. Uh, I mean, put some songs in the chat room. I, I can't see. I see it on my phone here. But just like, let me log in. What are some songs you know have been covered, JP? Um, hmm. Somebody put um, He Lives. Is that in there? Yeah, that's a traditional song. Let's see. He Lives. Yeah, you got a part one and you got a band. That means you got like a full band. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that we didn't talk about. So for those of you who are looking to play in a band situation that, you know, are trying to get more advanced, I know some of you might be beginners, but there are different levels where, you know, you have different approaches. Some people play at a church where it's just them. It's just them as a keyboard player and a drummer or maybe an organ player and a drummer. But some people want to learn how to play with a bass player, which is a totally different approach. So we have... The, the approach where you play two-hand chord voicings, and then we also have backing tracks that allows you to play as if you were playing in a band situation. So like yeah. Jermaine said, like we have the, the band version, and then we also have the version where if you play by yourself. Now, I don't want to scare y'all because I don't know, this might not be a beginner lesson. I, I'm recommending y'all start with beginners because that's what this webinar is about. But here's where you can get to. This is some of our members I've gotten... JP going traditional. My grandma had her church hat on. Yeah. Okay, so we got traditional. Y'all give me some other. Y'all give me some other stuff. I'm trying to see, somebody said, um, "I will trust." You got that one in oh, there? Yeah, that's a nice worship song. Slow. Uh, I think that that's. A we have that in there. Yeah, I will trust. Yeah. Let me see. Y'all just playing. They said, y'all, y'all don't got that many songs in there. Well, okay, I will trust. Let's see. And that, you said that's a slow worship song? Mm-hmm. Did you play on it? Yeah, it's great for beginners too. Really? Let me see. I hear some major chords in there. Yep. It's just in the country. That's very similar to what we've been going over. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look in. A, I'm gonna just see one more. What I see. Uh, great and mighty is he. Mm-hmm. You got that one? Yeah, that's a nice up tempo song. Let me yeah. see. I'm just gonna type great because you don't even have to know the exact title. If I type great. Wow, we got our great is your mercy. How great is our God? Great is thy faithfulness. Nobody greater. Um, you, should, and you should put an for that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Too many greats. Too many greats in there, man. Um, and then we, we search for that. Oh, okay. So I have to unlock it, which is uh, you get points. You, we, we have a point system. It's, it's real organized. It's really cool. JP that's, did this fancy logo. No, that's not the one. 
That's not Great and Mighty? No, that's the older one. Uh, Great and Mighty is here. That's, that's a different one. I like this one, too. Yeah. And you can see how far we've come. Now, mm -hmm. this lesson was done... Um, you like know, 2000, in 2013, oh, we've been out for a while, and uh, but now look at our studio. Look at what the Lord has done. Thank you. But in a serious way, that's why we have to charge a membership because mm -hmm. it's no way. This is not a nonprofit. Like I wish you could go get a grant, but the government ain't giving grants for. Um, so I haven't seen them for the gospel music training center. Definitely like, not. Definitely not. <laughs> you know, they, I don't know, they separate state and church, but uh, you know, this is something that we say, what is a fair, what is a fair rate mm -hmm. for all the technology, yeah. keeping these lights on? You should see what the studio looks like. And, you know, there's people in the other room that have to like switch the cameras. There's, mm -hmm. there's people, there's families involved with this. So, you know, $94 for three months. That allows all the economics to work and us to keep upgrading our stuff. But then that allows you to get, you know, get great value. And I, I like to say if you're playing and if you're learning and you got something to work on every day and it's because you're logged into our thing here. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's worth every penny. Like when your spouse looks at you and, and says, uh, well, if you're a female, I says, baby, I guess you could say, yeah. and they say, baby, you sounding good over there. Mm -hmm. And it's all your hard work coming out. And it's, it's, it's not very many things that gives you the, the reward of creating something your own. Poets, you know, watching your poem, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the face and the, the spirit of people change when they hear your poem. And what they do, they'd be like this. <laughs> You know, a musician right. watching people blessed by your music, a painter watching people behold the beauty of your work. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. So you're in the right place. You just got to get the right instruction. You got to get it in the right order. And you got to get it from the right people. At the right time. At the right time. And we think that this is the answer. So get in. Stop playing. Stop playing. Get in. And like my grandma said, what she say? She said, put up or shut up. And that's, that's kind of like the hard Truth. It's like you've been you've been thinking about this for a while. I don't think this just hits you, right? Mm -hmm. You you've been. This is your desire. You know when is that going to meet commitment? And that's the first level. You can commit to GMTC. Get in at least three months. The reason why I recommend three months because that's what it takes mm -hmm. at least to get that that momentum. Right. You try to start and stop, start and stop. You, you know you're not going to build that momentum enough speed mm -hmm. to break through the gravitational forces. Like a rocket ship, it has to it uses half of its gas just to boom, break through Earth's gravity. That's mm -hmm. what you kind of got to do with your plan. You got to three months. That's why I'm asking you to commit to three months today. And three months from now, you don't have to go to the next quarter with us if you don't want to. If, if you look back and your spouse is saying, look, look, I ain't seeing these chords come out right, then that's okay. But you have to be able to look back and say, I tried. I gave this a shot. And that's what we're offering on this webinar. Yep. So, um, are there any questions? If you guys have any questions, you can post them, and um, and uh, we will get to them. Um, somebody says, "What is the ratio of beginner lessons to advanced?" You have that offhand? Uh, we definitely have a good balance. Um, when you think about beginners to advanced, I think it depends on the person and what they're capable of doing. So. Some worship songs could even be considered to be something that a beginner can tackle. So right. one thing about being a beginner is that you don't want to be scared of certain songs because sometimes they might sound a lot harder than what they really are. But what we take pride in doing is slowing things down and breaking them down to the point where it doesn't matter what level you're on. You should be able to practice and learn them, you know, taking your time, but you definitely don't want to get it if you, if you definitely take your time with each lesson. Mm-hmm. Somebody says, uh, do we accept PayPal? They click. Well, for this, it has to be, we have to have a, uh, a credit card on file, you know. So when you, if you choose to do monthly, you know, this is, uh, we don't want to have extra accounting and stuff. That's how we keep our price low. We don't want to be sending out bills in the mail. This is the internet. Right? So we automatically do it. It keeps things easy. Mm -hmm. So we have your, your credit card on file and we bill it. Now, when you want to leave, 
You just call us up or you go to cancelprogram.com. We even set up a website for it. Mm-hmm. And you just cancel. And you're not billed anymore. Your information is purged from our system. And we go about our ways. We're still friends, but we just, we part ways. Some people come back, too. Yeah, they, 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 they feel like they, they're not growing anymore by themselves. Mm-hmm. They come back months later. Right. And uh, so, Different circumstances for different people, but you know, a, lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people do come back. So Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can have a family member do it. You give them the money. That's probably the best bet if you don't have that form of payment. Um. Any other questions here? Oh, they want to know the Oregon lessons, how they work. Do you teach the Oregon? Oh, no. We have a a special organist. He actually has done Gospel Keys 350 and 450. Our Oregon course. Yes, our Oregon course. And a phenomenal organist. um, Great mind when it comes down to explaining things and everything. So definitely, if you're looking to play the Oregon too as well, we have that for you too as well. Let me see. I saw something. Uh, are there any other payment arrangements like annual? You guys have annual? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, there's different payment options for those of you who want to save money. The more you actually pay up front, the more you save. So if you want to do three months at a time, right. then you're going to save some money. If you want to do a year at a time, you save you, even more. You save even more. And then some people do the lifetime membership. Um, which means you're basically paying for two years up front, but you never have to pay for it again. And the people that have really seen this value are the people that have been with us since the very beginning. We have people that have been with us since Since the beginning of this situation. And when we introduced the lifetime membership, it was something that changed a lot of people's lives because they never planned on actually ever leaving. So the lifetime membership gave them the opportunity to save their money and still become a member for life and never have to pay again. Yep. Somebody said they will join right now if we have blessed the Lord in there um, by Anthony Brown. Do we have that? Oh, yeah, we got that for sure. So you saying you're going to join. If I show you right now, <laughs> tell me, show put me. Up, put up a shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so my grandma said, you said we have that in there? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? Bless the Lord? Let me, uh, let me see. Okay. Because I, JP's, I don't know all the things. We we have a lot of it. We have, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord with me, come bless the Lord with me, and bless the Lord part one, part two. Uh, it's probably part one, part two. Okay. Oh, no, that's not it. That's but, not it? Man, we got so many. I mean, that, that just goes to show you that there are so many bless the Lords, but we hit all of them. <laughs> we did. We hit all of oh, it. there it is, Anthony Brown. It's it's funny because I typed "bless the Lord" again, then the different search came up. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know. We, um, but if I type that one in, and uh, let that me starts see, with, starts with a guitar. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. And that's the backing track. You guys get the backing track to practice to with practice. too as well. That's a long intro though. Yeah, he's just sitting there, <laughs> y'all. Oh, they see it. <laughs> What key do you think it's in? Hint, it's the note he's playing. I'm going to fast forward because all you're doing is hitting D. Oh, there it is. Oh, I like that. I can see why that person wants, you want to learn that because there's a lot of hits and stuff in there and... Uh-huh. Uh, Things that JP breaks down flawlessly. All right. And um, we'll be in the chat room too, a little bit after this, but uh, there should be the button up. Come on and join us in there. If you can't do three months, at least do one month and come in there and uh, hang out with us for a month. And uh, it's your decision if you want to go beyond that. Hang out with us for a quarter mm-hmm. and you can go quarter to quarter. Hang out with us for a year. And for some of y'all, just a tiny bit, invite only, you know, we, we get on the phone with you and uh, we see if the lifetime is an option for you as well, because that might be something you just, you know, you're a lifetime kind of person. Uh-huh. We call them lifers. So um, beginners, hopefully you found uh, this time well worth it. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, I we think did. we gave good info, even if you're like, Jermaine, I can't join. You know, I'm not joining right now. Um, you got a lot of information from this. And uh, we got a workbook 
uh, we'll probably email it to you or, or uh, those guys. I don't know if they have access to it. Should have asked them before we started, but they might put it in the chat room right now and you'll be able to see that. But um, thank you guys for joining us. I have fun. I always have fun when I do these things with JP. As you can say, you know, we compliment each other and uh, we try to bring you the best experience ever. Yes, so, sir. See us in the GMTC. See you there. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to be signing off and uh, see you next time. Take care. And remember, if you can hear it, you can play it.